In this video I would like to demonstrate the functionality of logic gates. Whenever sensors are acquiring data, the main intention is to get an interpretation of the sensor output and that's where logic gates are very useful, because those circuits can trigger a device into operation by more than just one enabling signal. A simple kind of analysis is done by a twilight switch, turning a lamp on as soon as the ambitioned light falls below a given threshold. To make the lamp control more energy efficient, another condition can be added before the lamp is turned on. The lamp should be turned on if it is dark and if somebody is close to it. A simple AND gate composed of two diodes and one resistor was introduced in the video about H-bridges. The H-bridge is enabled with the positive pole on the left side, if there is a high level at the upper and a low level at the lower input, while the positive pole is on the right side, if there is a low level at the upper and lower input. The working principle of the AND gate is simple. The signal at the output terminal of the circuit is low, meaning at ground level, whenever at least one of the input signals is low, because the potential is pulled to ground by the forward bias diode, respectively by both diodes. The output is high, meaning at the potential of the positive supply voltage only if both inputs are high, because now both diodes are reverse biased and the potential at the output clamp is pulled to the positive supply voltage by the pull up resistor. I am using LEDs instead of normal diodes at this demonstration circuit. The LED is lighted up whenever it is forward biased, which applies whenever the accordant input is at ground level. Only if both inputs are high, the LEDs are turned off and the output signal is also high, which correlates to a potential of approximately 12 volts. The low level at the output terminal differs clearly from ground level due to the voltage drop across forward biased diodes, which depends on the type of diode and is never zero, we can detect 2 volts by using LEDs. The circuit has to be altered slightly to get an OR gate. The output of an OR gate is high whenever at least one of its inputs is high, because the respective diode becomes forward biased by the potential at the input terminal and so a current is running through the resistor causing a voltage drop across the device. If neither input is high, the resulting output is kept at low level by the pull down resistor. When using LEDs instead of normal diodes, the device is lighted up whenever there is a high signal at the accordant input. The low signal at the output is indeed 0 volts, but the high signal is clearly different from the positive supply voltage. Once more there is a deflection because of the voltage drop across forward biased diodes. The inputs of a logic gate must always be connected to either the positive supply voltage or to ground to avoid unpredictable behavior. As you can see, the AND gate complies to a circuit with logical high at the inputs if the clamps are removed, while the OR gate acts like there is a low level at the inputs. Use pull up or pull down resistors at the inputs to avoid odd output signals of your circuit. The XOR gate implements the exclusive OR function. The output is high if only one of the inputs is on high level. Here, input A is high, hence diode 1 is forward biased and the drain voltage of the transistor equals nearly the potential at those input, which is the positive supply voltage. Input B is low, hence diode 4 is also forward biased, pulling the gate of the transistor to nearly 0 volts. The transistor is turned off, hence the potential at the output terminal equals nearly those of input A, which is the positive supply voltage. Let's have a look at the circuit while input A is low and input B is high. Now the drain voltage of the transistor is provided by input B, while the gate of the device is pulled to ground by input A. Once more the transistor is turned off and the potential at the output equals nearly those at input B, which is the positive supply voltage. If both inputs are low, diode 2 and 4 are forward biased, pulling the gate of the transistor to ground, hence the device is turned off. Diode 1 and 3 are reverse biased by what the drain voltage and so the output terminal is pulled to ground via resistor 2 and 3. 
if both inputs are high, diode 2 and 4 are reverse biased, hence the gate voltage of the transistor is pulled to nearly the supply voltage via resistor 1, hence the device is turned on. The resulting drain voltage and so the potential at the output terminal is 0 volts. Once again I am using LEDs to visualize the switching state of the diodes. As you can see, the output is high only if one of the inputs is connected to the positive supply voltage. If both inputs are at the same potential, the detected output signal is 0 volts. The NOT gate is a simple inverter. There is just one input terminal and the output signal is high when the input is low and vice versa. There is no logic functionality provided by the LEDs at this demonstration circuit, they are used to indicate the state of the input and the output. The LEDs are switched in parallel to the terminals of the circuit and they are lighted up whenever there is a high signal. Logic gates can be switched in series. If the output of an OR gate is inverted by a NOT gate, the resulting circuit is a NOR gate. NOR means NOT OR. The output is only high if both inputs are low. Any other combination results in a low signal at the output. When inverting the output of an AND gate, the resulting circuit is an AND gate, meaning NOT AND. The output is only low if both inputs are high. Any other combination results in a high signal at the output. The output of an ideal logic gate can be either 0 volts or the positive supply voltage. If the output equals 0 volts, the state is also called low, 0 or false. On the other hand, if the output equals the positive supply voltage, the state is called high, 1 or 2. No current is running through the inputs of an ideal gate. While the output resistance is 0. The propagation delay, which is the length of time taken for the quantity of interest to reach its destination, is also 0. No time passes by until the signal travels from the inputs to the output of the gate. As demonstrated, the circuits used so far are clearly different from ideal logic gates. Integrated circuits are the better choice than discrete ones and there is a large number of different chips available on the market. Here you can see two NOR gates, each with four inputs in a 14 pin case. The previously used circuit is clearly larger. By adding LEDs, the logic functionality can be visualized. Input 1 and 2, respectively 3 and 4 are joined and just one of the gates is used. The resulting circuit is a single NOR gate with two inputs. NOR gates or alternatively NAND gates alone can be used to reproduce the function of all other logic gates, which is why those gates are called universal logic gates. I would like to demonstrate that principle with NOR gates, you can find the circuits using NAND gates on the project page. The NOT gate is made by joining the inputs of a NOR respectively NAND gate. Three NOR gates are required to create an AND gate. The OR operation is implemented by inverting the NOR gate with a NOT gate. Five NOR gates are required to create an XOR function. There are several approaches to get as close as possible to an ideal logic gate when designing integrated circuits. A group of electronic logic gates using identical construction principles is called logic family. 
Circuits using resistor diode logic, also called diode logic, short DL, have been demonstrated before. The advantage is the simplicity of the design, but while using those construction principles, the only functions you can build are OR, respectively, and gates. Furthermore, the lack of an amplifying stage makes it nearly impossible to cascade DL gates. Here is an OR gate connected to the output of an AND gate. As you can see, neither equals the high level the positive supply voltage, nor is the low level zero volts. The LED at the input of the OR gate is not turned fully off, even if it is driven by a low signal. One reason for the deviations is the voltage drop across the forward bias diodes, like mentioned before. Another one is caused by the input current through the inline OR gate, which raises the voltage drop across the pull up resistor at the output of the AND gate. These errors are added up if more gates are connected in series to the circuit. Resistor transistor logic, or short RTL, is a class of circuits using resistors at the input network and bipolar junction transistors at the output. Here you can see an RTL NAND gate. If the input of at least one of the transistors is low, the accordant device cannot conduct, hence the output signal is high. The only way the output can be low is if both transistors are turned on by a high level at the inputs. As you can see, the current running through the inputs is negligible and the potential at the output is very close to the ideal state, at least while there is no load connected to the output. The NOR gate consists of a set of parallel connected transistor switches, driven by the logic inputs. The logic gating function of DTL circuits is performed by a diode network, while the amplifying function is performed by a transistor. DTL means diode transistor logic. The working principle of an AND, respectively NOR gate, was treated before. The circuits are composed of an AND, respectively OR gate made of diodes with an inline transistor amplifying stage. The amplifying function as well as the logic gating function of TTL circuits is performed by bipolar junction transistors. TTL means transistor transistor logic. Here you can see a TTL NAND gate. The AND functionality is implemented by transistor 1 and 2. If there is a low signal at one of the inputs, the circuit is equal to that drawn to the right. The emitter is connected to ground, while the base is connected to the positive supply voltage via resistor 1. The collector is connected to the base of transistor 3. The transistor is turned on, which is why almost no voltage is applied to the base of transistor 3, hence that device is turned off and the output signal is high. If there is a high signal at the input, the emitter gets connected to the positive supply voltage. The potential at the collector pin won't exceed 0.6V, because the emitter base diode of transistor 3 becomes conductive at higher values. The equivalent circuit diagram is a transistor operating in reverse mode, whose base is connected to the positive supply voltage via resistor 1. The current running through the base of transistor 1 causes two effects. On the one hand, that current also runs through the base of transistor 3, and on the other hand, the current turns the collector emitter line of transistor 1 on. Both effects make the emitter collector line of transistor 3 contact, hence the output signal becomes low. Like explained in the video about the properties of bipolar junction transistors, the current gain in reverse mode is clearly lower than in normal operation. Otherwise, the input current would increase dramatically and transistor 3 would be damaged because of a too high base voltage, respectively a too high current. Another effect to be considered is the maximal voltage across the collector emitter line in reverse mode, which is clearly lower than the maximal emitter collector voltage in normal operation. As you can see, the input current increases clearly when switching to 12V supply voltage and sooner or later the transistors will be destroyed. Hence, the supply voltage of TTL circuits is limited to a low range. Standard TTL circuits operate with a 5V power supply. 
at the TTL NAND gate shown here, the base and collector pins of the transistors at the inputs are joined. To get a more compact design, multiple emitter transistors are used instead when constructing a packaged IC die. These specialized bipolar transistors have a single collector respectively base area with separate emitter areas. Collector current stops flowing only if all emitters are driven by the logical high voltage, thus performing an end logical operation using a single transistor. Furthermore, the current running through the emitter collector line in reverse mode is minimal. Let's have a closer look at the output resistance of the circuit, which is caused by resistor number 2. As you can see, the voltage decreases clearly when inserting an LED while the output is logical high. The lower the value of resistor 2, the lower the output resistance, but consider that the current through the device is increasing while the output is low. By adding a push-pull output to the gate, the problem with the high output resistance can be solved. Whenever transistor 1 is turned off, transistor 2 is turned on, by what transistor 4 conducts driving low voltage to the output. The potential at the base of transistor 3 is slightly higher, approximately 0.2V than those at the base of transistor 4, while the potential at the emitter of transistor 3 is also approximately 0.2V, hence the resulting emitter base voltage is 0.6V by what the device would be turned on. To turn transistor 3 fully off, a diode is placed between the collector of transistor 4 and the emitter of transistor 3. Now, the potential at the emitter of transistor 3 is approximately plus 0.8V and the resulting base voltage is clearly below 0.6V. Without the diode, the potential between emitter and base of transistor 3 would be close to the threshold voltage, causing a high cross current. If transistor 1 is turned on, transistor 2 and 4 are turned off and transistor 3 operates in active region as a voltage follower producing high output voltage. When neglecting the resistance of transistor 3 and the forward bias diode, the output resistance of the gate depends solely on the value of resistor 4. The advantage of the so called totem pole amplifier is that even if the value of resistor 4 is very low, almost no current runs through the leg composed of R4, transistor 4, the diode and transistor 3. Neither if the output is high and no load is connected to the output, nor if it is low. Resistor 4 also limits the current in the middle of the transition, while transistor 3 and 4 respectively the diode conduct the so called shoot through, or in case there is a short connection to ground while the output is high. A disadvantage is the voltage drop across the emitter collector line of transistor 3, respectively the forward bias diode while the output is driven to logical high and a load is connected to the gate. In contrast to the multiple emitter transistor of the NAND gate, the transistors at the input of a TTL NOR gate are single devices. The functionality is identical to those of a single input at a NAND gate, however transistor 1 and 2 are each driving another transistor, labeled 3 and 4, that are switched in parallel by what the OR function is performed, which is inverted by the totem pole amplifier. The next circuit is a NAND gate in CMOS logic. CMOS means complementary metal oxide semiconductor. If input A and B are high, neither of the P channel MOSFETs, but both N channel MOSFETs are turned on, hence a conductive path is established between the output and ground, bringing the output low. If either input A or B is low, one of the P-channel MOSFETs will conduct, while one of the N-channel MOSFETs won't. A conductive path is established between the output and the positive supply voltage, bringing the output high. If both inputs are low, the two N-channel MOSFETs are turned off, while the P-channel MOSFETs are turned on. Once more, there is a conductive path between the output and the positive supply voltage, while none of the N-channel MOSFETs between output and ground conducts. The functionality of the CMOS NOR gate is very similar to those of the NAND gate. Again, each input is connected to the gate of one N-channel and one P-channel MOSFET. 
In contrast to the NAND gate, the two N channel MOSFETs are switched in parallel, while the P channel types are switched in series. The advantage of CMOS gates is that those devices can be driven with almost no current running through the inputs. In principle, there is just a small current running while the switching state alters, which can't be detected by this multimeter. Furthermore, they can be operated in a wide voltage range and finally, the output resistance is low. That's all about logic gates for now. You can find more information on the project page. Thanks for watching and I'll be back.